one closed circle. It's like a sorority or fraternity, rather. They all know each other. He could do it with one less than a phone call. The stroke of a key. He could have Google and Facebook close it down. Any opposition to him, any opposition to immigrants, he could have it done tomorrow or yesterday. Do you know that? With the wink of an eye, just by rubbing some menthol on his eyelid, he could stop it. It's frightening beyond belief. I never thought I'd see it in this country ever. And, uh... and you know what? The left would applaud the attack on the Second Amendment and the First Amendment. They would applaud it. And I'll tell you what else is coming. Or possibly coming. Tell me which outlets in the media are most vociferous against this maniac. It's certainly not television. It's not Fox News. They're very middle of the road. Only talk radio, isn't it? Yes, you're my voice of reason. You're the only people that, that, that understand and have... How you know, hard would it be for Obama to shut us off? Well, like, you know, that's... That, you know, that's attacking the very First Amendment of the Constitution. And so uh, who, would, who would say anything about it? Who would defend us if he, tur if he turned us off on the radio saying we are disturbing the social order? Like Kim Jong mentally ill did. I, I mean, or his I, stoop I, or his son, the, the herring eater there, whatever his name is, Kim Jong Moon. Okay, the, the, now you understand why there's darkness in the country. We have a vampire who will go after any amendment that grants us liberty to stand up to him. My friend, it's uh, Friday. We should have a good time, you know, all of that stuff. I'm sending you a copy of Government Zero. If you don't already have one, give it to a Marine buddy. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> I thought I heard a little voice over there. I get him out. Take him out. Get him out of here. Yeah, don't give him his coat. Don't give him his coat. Keep his coat. Confiscate his coat. You know, it's about 10 degrees below zero outside. No. Come on, get him out. We got to get the security moving a little bit faster here. Come on, fellas. They got to move faster. We're not dealing with tough hombres. <laughs> That's Trump having the Bernie uh, commies thrown out of a meeting in, in Vermont. Notice he didn't pa can't pander to them. That's why they left hates him, because he know they know what he's going to do to them. All of the little uh, cowards who have gotten away with virtual, well, the destruction of our society, the family, God, the church, you name it, they know what's coming when he wins. You know, another story comes out today about polls. Donald Trump must be destroyed, Sean Kennedy, CNN. And they go down the list, and it says that Trump channels that of the basically the white, angry, economically struggling America. And as the New York Times' as Nate Cohen analysis showed last week, the GOP frontrunner runs best with blue-collar rural registered Democrats. You know, they all saying it's the poor who like Trump. I've told you I've worked my way out of poverty, and I'm not poor. And all the people I know are not poor, to be honest with you. They all love Trump. Everyone I know who's worked all their life and makes a good living loves Trump. Now, we love the blue-collar, rural, registered Democrats as well. We love blue-collar, whatever that means today, blue-collar. What does that mean? I don't even know what the word means anymore. Where are the factories, blue-collar? But nevertheless, let's use that. All these idiots, New York Times, Nate Cohn, shows that the blue-collar, rural, people are the ones behind Trump. Uneducated. Uneducated. Well, I'm quite educated. People I know are very well educated. They all love Trump. So they're again, they're writing these falsehoods. They say he's no true conservative. He's not this. He's not that. He's no good. I've never seen such a, a, a round the clock litany of fear being motivated by the radical left because they've gotten away with murder. And they know what's coming. They know that when Trump wins, we're coming for them. We know, they know in their heart of hearts they're going to be uncoupled from their power structure. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're going to rock around the clock tonight. But you should ride, ride, so join me home. We'll have some fun when the clock strikes. We're going to rock around you know, I watch the clock tonight. We're going to rock, rock, rock. From the 50s, I see an America that was bold, daring, macho, unafraid, proud of itself. I look at America today, I see, uh, obviously, something else. Now, what do I see? And why has it come to this? It's because a very small band of radical, fanatical leftists have seized every aspect of the media, every avenue of government imaginable. They are not the majority. They don't, they don't speak for the people. This is a small band of deviants, political deviants, I'm not referring to their sexuality because I'm sure it varies across the board. They are political deviants in a statistical sense. They are deviants in a political sense, a social sense, and this small band of deviants in government and in the media have wrecked the United States of America and turned us into a nation of almost slaves. We are mental slaves in this country. What do I mean by that? How many of you dare speak what you feel even in your own home anymore. You see what I just said to you? You certainly can't speak what you believe at work. You get fired because of the small band of deviants who run your workplace in the Human Resources Department. They know just where to go, by the way. They know which departments to occupy. They occupy the universities, by the way, on their long march. And I'm using a phrase that's loaded for those of you who know history. Their long march through the culture of America began first in the universities because it, they were the softest target. So they took over the universities, and look what they've turned them into. They've turned the universities into, uh, okay, I have words for it, but I'm not going to use them. They're not universities anymore with ideals at all. They've turned them into something else, indoctrination centers, uh, places where uh, deviancy is encouraged, all sorts of insanity is supported, and uh, issues of liberty and Americanism are denigrated. And then after they got through with the universities, of course, on their long march, they took over government at every level, including the top position in the White House. They finally found their man. They put him in there. And uh, the media, because the media has long been taken over, there's no opposition to be found. They couch everything he does in another way. And so it's a small band of deviants who are running America and have induced a sense of doom and fear in most of us. Can Donald Trump save that? Can he reverse it? I think so, actually. This is why the left is so fanatically against him. They so fear an, a, a real American man who has stood up, a, a real American macho man. No one's even used that, that word. He's an alpha male. We've heard that. That's a nice way of saying it, but that's not what he is. He's not an alpha male. He's a macho male. That's why he appeals to minority men in particular, probably minority women as well. They're so tired of the metrosexuals, the double talkers, the guys with manicures, you know, the too good manicures, let's put it to you that way. The too good this, the too good that, they're sick of it. They're tired of the puppets. They want someone who's bold. And uh, that's what the, the story is. That's why people are waiting for the election. They can't wait. This is going to be a very, very big deal come uh, next November. We all know that. I don't think Hillary is a viable candidate. Truthfully, yeah, she owns, she thinks that she owns the unions. But as I pointed out yesterday, the female who is the head of the SEIU, the Service Employees International Union, one of the largest in America, the very same corrupt union that put Jerry Brown in power, and has virtually wiped out the entire opposition party in California. It's a one-party system. And if you think that's good for America, you ought to have your head examined. A one-party system is not good for North Korea, and it's not good for California. But the very same SEIU that put Jerry Brown in power admitted yesterday that 62% of its members are identifying with Donald Trump. Did you know that, that they're conservative? 
I think it's going to be a landslide unless they rig the election completely. And I don't know that the Republican Party doesn't want the landslide to happen. That's the problem. I think that the bull weevils inside the Republican Party will do everything they can to help Hillary win. But that's a separate story because that's only my suspicion or my conjecture. Okay? So let's get down to brass tacks. We see what's going on. I've given you the top stories of the day, which I, I can't repeat every hour. It's too hard. If you come in late to the classroom, I'm sorry, you have to catch up. Get the savage notes from someone else, because hour one was very important today. And if you missed it, it's going to be on the, what what month is this, January? It will be on the uh, quarterly tests that we have in February. The first midterms will be in late March on the savage uh, schedule, but we'll have the quarterly exams next month. And if you miss anything in any of the hours, you'll have to get it from the savage notes. Now let's go to the callers, and we have one open line at 855 400 7282. That's the phone number. WABC Joe, go ahead, please. What's your topic? What's your position? Hey, hey Mike, how you doing? Uh, I just, you know, so you started talking, I heard your whole diatribe, and you go right into the identity politics, and us versus them, they hate the country, you know. The universities are taken over by communists. Listen, I no, know you. I didn't use. I didn't use the word communist once. I said deviance. You got my word wrong. No, no. But I, I'm giving you the whole diatribe. Uh, excuse me. I'm giving you your whole diatribe that you do throughout the week. I just started. Oh, so wait. So, so the diatribe is not from today. It's from the week. Okay, you're being more specific. Because I said deviants took over the universities, and I said in a statistical manner they are deviant. Those are my exact words. Okay. But don't you think that instead of using the us versus them kind of politics, and listen, again, I know you're a provocateur, that this is what you do, this is how you do okay, it. Okay, all right, you know everything right now. Now you categorize me because you're so smart. In other words, I don't believe anything that I say. I do it just to provoke people. Is that it? But, but, you know, instead of getting to a, to a fight about you, with you... Well, what, isn't that what you're doing? Aren't you trying to provoke me? No, oh, I'm trying to play your... Oh, no, you're above provocation. I get it. You're not trying to provoke me. And it's not you versus me. Suddenly you're my friend. Is that right? I don't want to get too riled up. But, you know, the reason why... I... Well, you just tried to get riled up, but you didn't pull, you didn't, uh, pull my... You didn't push my buttons too good. Because I can see right through you. What's your main point, my friend? Okay, my main point is I am an Iraq War veteran. Ah, uh, yeah, are you all? Are you a war hero? You have the medal. You have the Medal of Honor as well. Sir, I'm not any kind of hero. I I serve my country. And Good for I'll you. I'm glad to hear. All right, so you served your country and what? And you agree with everything that the monster in the White House is doing? Is that it? And then and then here you go again, the monster. So that so that's productive, right? That's an intelligent comment you just made. It's a very intelligent comment. If you want real intelligent, I'll send you government zero and you can read four hundred pages about what the monster has done. With references. But are you willing to read something or is your mind made up? You can be the, the I am a self made scientist and, and, and I have oh, here we go again, but you didn't react to what I just said. Would you read a book? Would you look at the facts? Would you see the references, or your mind is made up? But then you show your ignorance, and you call the man a monster. You see this? Here we go again. But you didn't say you'd be willing to read a book, did you? But do you see how you defeat your own argument? No. Did you see what I just said? You, Mr. Ignoramus, refuses to even read a book. I, I love books. I love books. But, uh, oh, you love books? Okay, so be my guest. Would you read Government Zero and re refer to it and see if you disagree with any of my factual statements? Knowing your words, knowing your words, have you no shame? But anyway. Sir, you, so you're changing the subject again. You're showing your ignorance. You're showing your ignorance because my book became number three on the New York Times bestseller list. Does that mean everyone who read it is an ignoramus? Listen, everybody, in case you didn't... No, no, you listen to me now. You've talked. You listen to me. Does that mean everyone who bought the book is an ignoramus because they don't agree with you? Just in case you didn't know, it's called Government Zero, and he's trying to sell you his book. Just in case you didn't know that. Well, I, sir, what are, what are you? Who are you talking to right now? I'm talking to you, Mike. I'm talking to you. I thought we're talking here. Thought, well, what are you? Wait, sir. Let me ask you something. You're a war hero. We know that. What do you actually do for a living? Hey, wait a minute. I didn't. 